So in this video here, we're going to talk about model pruning, how you can actually like go in and reduce the size of your model and still keep the same accuracy, the mean error position and so on when you're talking about update detection models. But you can pretty much use an arbitrary PyTorch model out there, prune it directly, which just means that we're reducing the layers and also some weights. So we're just removing redundancies, removing redundant weights and layers in our models. So this can actually reduce our model size with up to 10, 20% without losing any accuracy at all. In this video here, we're specifically going to test it out on a YOLO V8 model. You can use any of the YOLO models from Ultralytics, any PyTorch model out there. It is the exact same method. You just have to load in the model and call a couple of functions. You're good to go. We can do benchmarking, do a comparison before pruning and also after pruning. So let's just jump straight into it and see how you can do model pruning on PyTorch model. So to start with, let's just go inside the Ultralytics documentation. If you go inside the models tab, we have all the different update detection models, segmentation models, and so on, available over here in the left. You're going to use the YOLO V8 model. We have a bunch of videos in here as well. You can see the comparison tables here. So these are the benchmark on the Coco dataset. We can also going to see the new YOLO V10 model, which is significantly faster. But we basically just want to go inside our layers and individual weights from our neural network. So we want to go ahead and use statistics to figure out what weights does not really affect our output at the end because again we might have some dead weights just sitting around here and there and we can just basically just skip them reduce our network and then we can increase the speed of our model because our model size will be significantly smaller and that's going to like speed up the whole model make it smaller run fast so it's pretty much just free to do and we won't really lose any accuracy of course you can still like just bump it up let's just reduce 50% of the weights in your model and you will start to lose accuracy, of course. So we need to figure out the right balance with how much pruning we can apply to a model before we lose accuracy. But to pretty much all models out there, we will be able to apply some kind of pooling. So in here, we can basically just see the model architectures and so on. This is just how we can pull it, but it's really easy to work with. It's just a few lines in code. So let's just jump straight into the code editor and actually like see how we can do it. I just used the YOLO V8 model just for simplicity, but you can use any update detection model, segmentation model, any model that you implemented in PyTorch. You can just load in with PyTorch. If you have the PT files, you can create your own custom networks where you basically just have it layer by layer implemented and then you can apply pruning after that. So first of all, we need to import Torch from PyTorch and we also have this nn.utils.prune and then we can import that as prune. So this is the main functionality that we're going to use and they have some different algorithms, statistical algorithms that goes in and calculates how does the weight, individual weight and so on, how does it affect the output of our network. Then we import YOLO from Ultralytics. We set up our function to prune our model. So the function I input here is the model that we want to prune and also the amount. So right now the default is just 30%. It's probably a bit in the higher end. So let's just go with 10% to start with. We can always like increase it when we are calling the function. Then we can run through all the modules inside of our model. So it's basically just going layer by layer. Right now we're just checking if each individual layer in our model is a convolutional 2D layer. You can actually choose the specific layers that you want to go in and prune. So it could be in the backbone, in the neck or in the head. So depending on if you want to have like just standard artificial neural networks. So that will be linear layers convolutional layers, 1D, 2D, 3D, and so on. You can just specify that in here. You can even just go through all the layers instead of just checking if the instance here is a convolutional layer. But right now we're just checking. We only want to prune the convolutional layers in our YOLO V8 model. Then we can go ahead and call prune.l1 underscore unstructured. So we have a bunch of different statistical methods that can prune our models. So the most common one here is the L1 unstructured. So it's just calculating the L1 norm. So that's just like a metric that we can set up. And then the value, the absolute value with the lowest L1 norm score, it is basically just set to zero. So we just reduce that weight. So the L1 pruning is just on individual weights. If you want to prune like full layers and so on, we can also do that. And we even have random pruning as well, where it's just going to like randomly choose some weights in your model and then go in and prune those. Pruning can also help with generalization, so the model can be more robust and so on, because it could be that you have some overfitting, then you can go in and prune your model, and it might act like go in and help with that and reduce the overfitting in your model, because we just randomly remove some weights. There's also the L2 norm, 
So that will be like on a module level, so the whole layer by layer that we can go and reduce the weights in there, but also just whole layers in general. So it really depends on what you want to try out. You can test out all the different methods. Instead of L1, you can just specify L2 and so on. Uh, you can find that in the PyTorch documentation. But right now, let's just go with the L1 norm. Then it's just going to set the lowest values equal to zero. So the 10% lowest L1 norm values, we just set that to zero and reduce the weights by that. Then we can just go in and remove each individual weight in our module, depending on the L1 norm scores that we have calculated. So this will be returning our pruned model. We're pretty much good to go now. This is everything that we have to do. We can just call this functionality from PyTorch. Again, it's implementing PyTorch, so we can take an arbitrary PyTorch model as well. So now we're going to set up our model. We're just going to use this YOLO v8 small model. And we just have the instance YOLO, YOLO vs small. You can choose medium, nano, and so on. You can find all the details on the Ultra Lakes documentation. We can even go in and take the YOLO v10 model as well. But let's just take the small model, the YOLV8 small model. We have the COCO8 YAML data set. So this is what we're just going to do the evaluation on. So we can calculate the mean error position before and after we have done the pruning. You can use your own custom data set in here as well. So this is basically just how we can evaluate it with Ultralytics. If you're doing evaluation with PyTorch and your own models, you just need to call that functionality. So right now, before we do any pruning at all, we're just going to get the results. So we get the mean error position of our pre-trained model. You can also have your own custom models, just specify the path to your custom model that you have trained. Then it's going to open that up. You can have your own custom data set with the YAML file to your data set folders. And then you can do it perfectly fine on your own data set as well. So that might be a bit more helpful if you're trying to solve for some specific things. Then we go and extract the PyTorch model from our Autolytics model. So we just call model.model .model and set that equal to a PyTorch model. Then we can print the model so we can see how it looks layer by layer. Then we can see how many convolutional layers we have and all the other different types of layers. So we can go in and check for that in our pruning function. If we scroll a bit further down, then we can see that we can just print pruning started and then we can call a function that we implemented up at the top. So prune model, we throw in a PyTorch model. Again, you can take an arbitrary PyTorch model and then we need to specify the amount. So we're going to prune it by 10%. Then we're just going to print that our model has now been pruned. We extract the PyTorch model or basically just set our Autolytics model equal to a new pruned torch model. And after we've done that, we can go in and save our model, but also run the evaluation again. So we can do the comparison before and after. So this is pretty much everything that we have to do. Then we can just save it. We just save it with our PT file. So this is just PyTorch that we're doing it with. And we can then go down, load in our model. So we just save a new file with the prune model. We load in with Autolytics again, just to show you the whole pipeline and how you can use it in your own projects and application. And then we just do another evaluation run. You can also go in and fine tune your prune model. So instead of using the pre-trained model, you can just prune the pre-trained model and then train it on your own custom data set that might have some advantages and so on. So you can just test that out for your specific use cases. So this is a really cool, tip that you really need to know if you want to deploy models into production because it has a really significant impact on both the inference speed but again also the cost over time so let's say that we are able to run like eight frames per second and we can reduce it by 20 percent then we pretty much can squeeze probably like 10 frames per second out of a model instead or basically just have it running 20 percent more efficiently so let's just go in and open a terminal now i'm going to open up my anaconda prompt There we go, and we can just run our pruning. Let's just run now, and we'll be able to see all the results down in the terminal. So first of all, again, we run the evaluation after we've loaded in the model. Right now, we're just using it on the CPU. We have this Coco 8 data set, so it's not really that many images that we have, and then we print out the model. So if you just go up to the top here, we're going to have them side by side with the comparisons. So this is the whole v 8 model, layer by layer. We see all these convolutional layers, and these are the ones that we go in and prune. Let me check if we have some other, we have some bottleneck here. So we have some activation functions after that. So it's mainly just consisting of convolutional layers, at least in the backbone. But this is the first evaluation that we're doing. We can take a look at the mean error position. So they're pretty high. We can see for a person, we have a bit lower mean error position. We can see the precision recall, the number of instances, and again, also the images. So we don't really have that many images in our Coco 8 data set. So definitely test it out on your own as well. So we see the mean error positions here, they're pretty good. 
let's now go down and do the comparison and see how much is it act like dropping by just doing pruning with 10 percent if you just take a look at the overall mean error precision it is 0.72 so let's just round it up so 0.72 remember that we have the whole model architecture that we're just printing out you don't really need to do that but then we can see all the individual convolutional 2d layers that we are pruning just go all the way down to the bottom and now we can see that we get some uh, sequential models here with our convolutional layers so now we're pruning a model a model has been pruned we're saving a model and again our prune model has been saved we can then load it in again and do the exact same evaluation makes you pretty much here we're good to go the elephant here drop the bit but let's go in and take a look at the overall mean error position so right now we can see that it acts like dropped significantly so from 0.72 to 0.60 so this is actually like a pretty significant drop that it's doing in this example here but again it's also also a very small data set and we pruned it with 10 percent let's just try to bump down to 0.5 and let's run rerun it again and take a look at the results so i've done this on both custom data sets custom models and so on where it doesn't really drop the probably the highest that i've been able to squeeze out is 20 percent so let's see how it works out now so now we get 0.72 if you only prune it by five percent looks pretty much the same as we had before so right now we're pretty much getting the exact same mean error position even though we're pruning it with five percent but this is also still pretty important like reduce the model with five percent we make it run faster it is also smaller and we don't lose any accuracy at all we just need to call a single function so this is just something that you need to have in your pipeline and know about this tip and trick let's just try to bump it up to 20 percent here just to end it off just to see how bad it is because right now after that we dropped it by point to 0.6 see here get okay, the results point point 37 so that's pretty bad so again it really depends on your data set and also your model that you're testing it out either you're doing it before training or fine tuning on your prune model that you can also do that just by reducing the weight and so on if you want to have a model that can run significantly faster again as i mentioned before i've been able to squeeze out like 20 25 percent without really losing that much mean error precision probably like 0.01 or something like that so this is a really cool tip and trick that you need to know when you're training your own computer vision models either for segmentation update detection and all those different tasks so i hope you have learned a ton from this video here definitely going to use this in your own application and projects and then i hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos until then happy pruning